Hello and welcome to this week's episode of John's Garage. This week we are having a look at the king of Porsches, the pinnacle of Porsche 911 design. And I can see the owner in the background waving his fist. He's delighted to have his car feature on John's Garage, okay? This week we are having a look at a Porsche 993. This is the very last run of the air-cooled models. And as I say, this is the pinnacle of the original Porsche 911 design. So let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are with the Porsche 993. What on earth is a Porsche 993 and when on earth was it for sale? Well, 993 is the Porsche internal designation of the model. This particular model was built between 1994 and 1997 and was offered for sale then 1995, 1998. Okay, it was available in four different body styles. You had coupe, convertible, Targa, and also a Speedster model. Now, in terms of engine, what engine options had you? Well, you had a couple of different engine options and different power outputs, but today we are going to have a look at a 3.6 litre, 272 horsepower Carrera 4. And I'm going to show you how to know if this is a Carrera 4 or some other Porsche model. And we'll have a little chat about that. We are also going to have a look at the engine, which is in the boot, not in, under the bonnet, okay, as you'd kind of normally expect with a car. And what else can we tell you about this? Well, they were also available in a 3.8 litre flavour with a turbocharger attached. They were available as with the Porsche four-speed auto tiptronic system. They were also available in a five-speed manual, but this being a Carrera 4, this comes with the six-speed manual, and it was the very, very first time uh, Porsche offered a six-speed manual on the 911. Now, what else do we have here and what other technicalities can we tell you about? Well, we can tell you that this model is considered to be the best of all the different 911 model variants, bar none, okay? And that is down to a couple of different reasons. Number one, Porsche really, really upped the build quality on these cars. So, build quality is nice, it's solid, this car is usable every single day of the year. They do say a Porsche 911 is the super car that you can use in all weathers, all climates, all conditions, and this is one of those, and this is the main reason for that reputation. On the rear end, we have a multi-link rear suspension. Now, interesting note on that, that multi-link rear suspension was developed for the Porsche 989, and I would encourage you to go and look up the Porsche 989. The Porsche 989 was designed between 1989 in 1991 it got canned because it was a market crash at the time porsche sales dived and i'll tell you an interesting little tidbit about that as well in a moment but anyway the porsche 989 is essentially what we call the porsche panamera nowadays it was the four-door porsche it looked every bit like a porsche 996 that came in the late 90s okay so very interesting car but the multi-link rear suspension had been developed for that and that was carried into this model also developed for that was a new interior which didn't make it into this model. But that is why this particular Porsche, the 993, is known as the very last modern classic Porsche, and I can see why. Everything about this car, it feels old, it looks old, but by God, it does not drive old. This thing drives right up to date. Even at this stage, what is it, 27, 28 years old? Yeah. And it still holds up with all modern cars. It gives sheer enjoyment, and the reason for that is very, very simple. It has a complete lack of driver aids. It's a balanced car, but it's a car you have to treat with respect. But this being the Carrera 4, well, it allows you to have a little bit of fun because there's four-wheel drive there to try and pull you back in line. I won't say it'll succeed every time. You've got to treat this car with respect, but certainly Porsche handling woes were tamed a little bit with this model, okay? So let's have a little look at the engine, and we'll have a little chat about that now in a moment. Okay, so you can see the rear end of the Porsche 993, a lot more refined looking than the model which went previous to this one. Now, interesting to note, the styling in this car was by a British designer, not German, that's Tony Hatter, and Tony really refined back the styling. He recessed back the headlamps, he made the car a lot more flush, and a lot more smooth and aerodynamic. Now, you can see at this particular angle, this particular Porsche Carrera 4 is a narrow body. You could, get a wider body which had wider rear arches it also had spacers in the rear wheels to push them out but other than that technically it's the exact same as this car now there's a debate among Porsche enthusiasts as to which is the best um, the problem being when you widen the arches and fit the spacers you increase the car's weight okay whereas with the narrow body while it doesn't have as wide a track and maybe as good a handling 
it certainly has less weight, which means it can handle, handle as well, if not better in the right hands, than the wide body. So it's just a personal preference as to which you would like yourself. Now, I did say when I was around the front just one more, uh, just a minute ago, that I did have a little interesting tidbit of information around the recession that happened in the late 80s, early 90s, which impacted Ford sales. Would you be shocked if I told you this was almost a Toyota? Okay, very, very clear, almost a Toyota. Toyota in the late 80s and early 90s when Porsche were going through their financial hardships, they made an offer to buy Porsche and it was very advanced in terms of negotiations until the Porsche family themselves stepped in and said no, Porsche must remain in German hands and ultimately there was a tie up with Volkswagen done a little bit later on which work, has worked out satisfactorily for all parties and of course keeps the brand German owned. So anyway let's have a little look in under the boot here or bonnet depending on what way you want to express it. So what have we got here? We have a 3.6 litre naturally aspirated flat six engine. It's air cooled. You can see the large air vents coming in the back. For anyone familiar with air cooled engines, the layout here will be very, very familiar to you. There'll be no shocks. Now, what is different about an air cooled engine? What makes people prefer air cooled engines? What makes people not prefer them? The main reason for the preference is, apart from the sound and the performance, it's weight saving. You have no cooling system, you have no water, you have no water pump, you have no radiator. All of those things add weight, they add complexity. What you do have here is a dry sump, you have two oil filters, and you have a heck of a lot of oil. So I would have previously, for those of you who are really long-term fans of the channel, driven a Porsche 911, and I just couldn't get on with it. The reason for that was, and I didn't realize it fully at the time, I had to let it warm up. So in that video, I did say the more I was driving, the more I was getting into it, the more it was coming alive. I didn't realize you had to let these warm up quite a bit before you could really enjoy them. But I know that this time, and this car has arrived pre-warmed for me, which is great. Now, the other thing I really, really like and approve of in this car, it's not a show queen. This is not polished. This is not covered in different waxes and oils and hosed down and cleaned down. This is a car which is driven and used and enjoyed, and that shows. We have a lovely original looking engine here. There is no oil leaks. It's perfectly dry. It's perfectly in its natural form is the way I would describe it, and I love to see that, okay? That's something I absolutely love to see because it means this car is not a, sh a show queen or a garage queen. It is used and it's enjoyed, and I think that's really important with a lot of these cars in Ireland that they don't just get parked up. Now, having a little look back up here, we'll just close down the boot for one second. You'll see it's nice and flush back here. You can see there's cooling vents here that will direct in the air to cool the engine. However, if you're really pushing on in this engine, this spoiler will deploy automatically above a certain speed being 70 miles per hour. It'll rise up and it'll direct even more air in. Now there is a bigger version of this spoiler available and that was called the whale tail. And that's again, a traditional Porsche feature, but the whale tail, if it's fitted, is actually not deployable. It's fixed in position, but it's better for cooling as well. You can also, if you wanna impress the neighbors, deploy this yourself. And I'm gonna play a video just now, which will show it deploying via a button on the dashboard. Maybe you're starting off from the traffic lights and you know you're about to enter the traffic light Grand Prix and you want to make sure there's enough cooling going into the engine. You can do that, okay? And I can see the owner giggling. So I'm sure he has done that on one or two occasions to enjoy his Porsche flat six, 3.6 liter naturally aspirated. Now on that, okay, there was a huge variation of different models and different examples of these Porsches, the 993 available. You had the Carrera 2. What was the Carrera 2 and why is this a Carrera 4, you might ask? Carrera 4 indicates it's a four-wheel drive model. The Carrera 2 was rear-wheel drive. Now, on that, okay, which is best, which is the one you want? Well, it depends on the owner, it depends on the driver. The Carrera 2 will certainly give the more traditional uh, Porsche driving experience whereby you have the engine here hanging out behind the rear wheels. Kind of gives you a bit of a pendulum effect. It's incredibly enjoyable to drive. It's incredible the performance you can get out of it. But once you push beyond the limit and the limit will be felt just like that, you're in danger of losing control, okay? Now, this being the most refined of the 911's air-cooled series still doesn't mean it's not, it's tame because it's not tame. The four-wheel drive, however, gives you a little bit more usability to use that performance and to push it on. You have four-wheel drive, it will, it will look after you a little bit more, but still it can break free. Now, what else could you have here? Well, you could have a turbocharger. It could be a Carrera Turbo. 
And in that case, then you're going to have a lot more power and a lot more power to tame. So again, you need to be aware of what you're doing. You could also go for the GT2 specification. An interesting note on the GT2 in 1995, it was the Formula One pace car for the year. OK, it was using all races of that season. OK, huge performance, brilliant car, but demanded huge respect from the driver. And of course, all models of 911 and 993, despite them being the tamer of the models or the more usable of the models, demands respect, okay? Anyway, talking about respect, let's have a little look at the inside. So you're very welcome to the interior of the Porsche 993. Of course, hugely improved over the previous model, although to look at it, you think, well, this is very, very similar to, to the previous model, but I'll explain all of that in a moment. But before I get to that, it is worth talking about the four-wheel drive system in this car for one more second. In the previous model, this, there was a four-wheel drive system, but it wasn't the same as this one. There used to be three differentials, and that was all taken away. All that weight saving done by getting rid of all that, a complication gotten rid of, and they replaced it with one viscous coupling, which enabled the four-wheel drive system to be lighter, more reliable, and more refined in this particular car. But anyway, anyway, that's exterior stuff. Let's talk about the interior. What do we have in here? Well, we have the very traditional and classic Porsche layout, but this almost didn't make it to this model. They did have a new interior designed. They had it ready to go, but for cost saving uh, reasons, they had to ditch it. They had to just improve what they had, which is what they did. How did they improve it? Well, first of all, we have a brilliant Becker Grand Prix sound system. Nice buttons, a little bit fiddly, but generally easy to use, easy to reach buttons. Safety wise, and Porsche did care about the drivers and they kind of realized them might be a crash in here we have a driver's airbag and we have a passenger side airbag what else do we have well, we have our usual assortment of fog lights and all that we also have a lovely climate system here this is really nice stuff folks i actually can't see all the climate uh, dials and stuff here but i can touch them and i know exactly where everything is unlike a touchscreen system which you get in a modern car where you're trying to press it and you're not sure what you've pressed and it selects the wrong thing this is just nice. I don't have to see it. I can learn where everything is. I can touch and feel and I can operate everything. Right slap bang in the center here in front of the driver. You have the rev counter. Very important. Of lesser importance, of course, is the speedometer and even lesser importance again, the clock. However, there's a couple of dials here which I want to talk about. You have fuel dial. Nothing particularly important there about that. Nothing unexpected. We then have an a dial that indicates it's for oil. Then we have another dial that indicates it's for oil oil and then we have another dial that indicates it's for oil i'm getting my dials and oils all mixed up here we have three oil dials is what i'm saying okay why do we have three well one is for pressure one is for temperature and the other one i can't remember what it's for <laughs> level. level the owners just shouted at me it's for level pressure level temperature so we have three oil dials in one car and it's all there and it's all nice and useful what else do we have in here well we have a six-speed gear shifter okay indicating obviously we have a six-speed box we also have that usual cramped little pedal box down here but cramped it maybe but effective it absolutely is what else do we have well we have a sunroof okay which is up here which is controlled by a switch down here we have a rear window wash wipe and we also have the button here to deploy the rear wiper hazard light switch we also have the central locking switch and we have an exclamation mark i'm not sure what the exclamation mark does but does it really matter at this point probably not we also have under here a nice big glove box for your convenience you could probably fit actually it's quite deep looking in there so you can fit quite a bit and we also have a pull here for the front bonnet there is rear seats in here and i'll grab you a shot of those in just a second they lift up but as is probably the normal case the owner has opted to put this in the luggage position whereby you can use it for storage and so on and so forth other than that we have a very period correct tape deck storage unit so it can store four tape decks in this particular unit here and i'm sure the owner gets hours of pleasure from listening to his mid-90s tape decks okay now this is an Irish registered model, but this is not an original Irish car. It's been in Ireland for about 15 years, according to the owner. And of those 15 years, they've owned it for the last 10 years. And it has covered 124,083 miles. And we're going to add a couple of more miles onto that now in just a moment. Other than that, you have your little vanity mirrors and conveniences like that. You have electric windows all around. You have nice big storage bins here in the door. And you also have an interesting little handle there to release the door as well. That's pretty much it for the 911 interior. I can absolutely tell you though, 
that in comparison to the previous 911, I drove the seats are way more improved, way more comfortable and a lot nicer. And I have to say, I'm actually impressed with the sheer quality of what Porsche has put in here. Now, of course, nowadays, comparing it to modern cars, it may not be the best of materials or the most expensive materials, but please bear in mind, everything here has lasted. Everything behind these panels is working 100% and is functioning like the day it left the factory. And that's important for a reason. Back when this was made by Porsche, they didn't skimp on quality. None of the German manufacturers did. It was starting to creep in, but this 911, the 993, was considered the absolute pinnacle in every single way, including build quality. So everything in here is working, it's functional, and it's in great condition, and I'm delighted to be in here. So let's go on, let's go have a drive of the car. So how you going folks? You're very welcome to the drive of the 993 911, okay? Now, I can absolutely tell you for anyone who has ever driven these, the first thing you're gonna note when you're in one of these is the engine sound, that flat six engine. It just has a beautiful little note to it. And it's a beautiful pickup. It's a really light little car and that weight and that power kicking into your backside, you can feel it. Now, the other thing about this car, I've driven 911s in the past and I've never quite gotten comfortable with them, but I can say today that if you're in the market for one of these, I would highly recommend you search out the hardback sports seats, which is what this one is fitted with, because these are really nice. The leather is lovely and soft in them. They're very comfortable. Yeah, they're a bucket seat and all that, but they're a very nice bucket seat. Now, I have a very, very bad back, so I'm very quick to tell if the seat isn't good, and I can tell you in this today, I could spend all day driving this without any issue whatsoever. Now, the other thing is, as I said in the introduction, this car has arrived to me warmed up, which means I can sit in, I can drive it, and I can enjoy it, and that's exactly the way this feels right now. Brakes are very nice, nice and grippy. Pottering around town here, it's a very, very easy drive. I just want to make sure that everyone is gone before I pull out. It's a busy junction, folks, and woo, I gave a little bit of throttle there and I could hear it. It's a very, very sharp car to drive. Lots of pickup, a wall of power. You can actually feel the torque in the engine. It's quite nice, especially up behind you. You got that hum in your engine, as, in your ears, as well as you're driving it. Gear shift. Possibly a bit of a long throw in comparison to more modern sports cars, but having said that, it's here, it's functioning, it's working. What is it, 27 years old, I think, at this stage? 28 years old, heading 28. It's lovely. It's absolutely sublime to drive. Now, the thing about this car is, and as I've kind of alluded to several times already, this might be the most refined of the 911 design, of the air-cooled design, of all of them that was released since the 356. However, I will be very, very quick to say also, you still have to treat this car with respect. There is no ele electronic aids gonna to come to your rescue here. You have a four wheel drive system. You have you, the driver, and that's kind of it. Now you have very good brakes. You have very, very well set up chassis, lots of power in behind you, but you gotta treat this car with respect. Although it has a four wheel drive system, it can't beat physics. And the physics of having your engine slung out behind your rear axle, means that you could end up in trouble quite easy if you don't treat the car with respect now if you know what you're doing which i normally don't okay <laughs> you can get quite a bit of performance out of the car but as i say you got to know what you're doing now again this being the narrow body version of this car it does compromise you in a little bit in grip however that compromise in grip is made up for with the fact that this car is lighter than the wide body car okay other than that there's no actual technical differences between them in terms of suspension in terms of tune and so on and so forth it's actually really refined folks driving along we're doing about 80 kilometers 100 kilometers something like that around now no wind noise there's no creaks there's no rattles we're doing well to find a modern car as refined as this i'm not going to lie oil pressure is good oil temperature is good we have plenty of fuel Christ, folks, I might just drive this on up to Dublin and keep it for myself. It's that nice. Um, I actually can't get over how stable it is. It, I was expecting a lot more, I suppose, giddiness in the chassis. Um, a lot more, I suppose, more of a solid ride. It's, it's actually really refined. So it does live up to the hype and the fame that this is a refined car. Now, I do think it would be remiss of me if I didn't go from six to four just to give you a little sound of the engine. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna shut up for one minute. We'll 
slow down. It's not my car, so I don't want to end up going straight through this hedge here backwards. Well, straight through backwards is what I should say. Um, but yeah, it is incredibly, like for what is ultimately a supercar to a lot of people, I can't get over how refined it is. I actually genuinely can't get over how much I like this car. Um, I've driven 911s in the past, and as I've said, I've, I've always been a bit hit and miss about, a bit hit and miss about the styling. Personally, I think the hype of the 993 is right. This is the ultimate 911 in my view. It is the king of kings. Um, the styling is just right, the balance is just right, the build quality is here. The prices of these folks, it isn't time to get in and grab a bargain. The bargains are gone about 10 years ago. Prices are still going straight up. You can pick them up reasonably. You can get the narrow bodies a little bit cheaper. But having said that, I think they're worth every single penny. I can absolutely see it. And the other thing I like about this car, folks, and this isn't, this is definitely not a criticism, it's all a bit worn. It's all used, but I like that because it means that it's not kept in a garage. The owner takes this out, the owner uses it. And that's nice to see, because so many of these just end up parked up, taken out once or twice a year, and just not used. And these were built by Porsche to be used. That was the whole point of them. Just thought I'd shut up there and let you hear the engine. I'd shut up a second time and let you hear the engine um, but that was the whole thing with these these were built to be used these weren't built to be show queens you could keep it as a show queen if you wanted but that's not the purpose of the car the car is it's a thing of beauty but it's beauty you could go on a date with not beauty you just had to sit up and shut up and look at you can actually use this and enjoy it and you know what folks I think this car has converted me. The Porsches are actually what people talk about. I've always been a bit skeptical. I've always been a bit on the fence about them, but I've never driven a 993. And I'm really, really, you can kind of tell this grin is not fake. I'm really happy the owner brought it along today. I'm really happy the owner has trusted me with the car and that we've gotten to enjoy it. Um, because people and their cars, it's a special bond and it's not a bond you find anywhere else. And that's why I'm happy in this. I don't really want to give this one back, folks. Do you reckon I could outrun the guards? Do you reckon I could do it like in the gumball rally? God. Yeah, I'd better give it back. Otherwise, the channel will come to an end. All right, folks, listen. Thank you so much. If you want your car to feature in John's Garage, give me a call. Give me an email. Get in contact with me like this owner did. And we can see what we can do. Um, as I say, this has kind of made my day. It's been a long week, and this is this is a nice way to finish the week. Um, just wish I could finish every single week like this. But anyway, thank you very much, folks, for joining in. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And please share the channel. It's a small Irish channel, but it's catering to Ireland. It's not catering or pandering to anybody else. And it would be great if you could support it. Thank you very much, folks. Bye-bye.